Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to be looking at how to make kombucha, the greatest gift from earth in my opinion. Kombucha is a health drink traditional to Russia. I said health drink, so obviously there's a lot of health benefits to it. Kombucha is made with what is known as called the SCOBY, in other words, symbiotic uh, culture of bacteria and yeast. Now I know this thing looks like a pile of pig skin, but I can promise you it's not. It's well, what it sounds like, culture of bacteria and yeast. And in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make kombucha. First, we start off by boiling three quarts of water. Now, all the videos that I've seen online about how to make kombucha, none of them ever mention that you have to have filtered water. This is very important. Now, once when your water starts to boil, you're going to take a cup of sugar to that. And the reason why you want to have filtered water for this recipe is because the SCOBY, it really does not like um, unfiltered shitty water that you get from the tap. It really likes whatever it is and to be clean. And so with that, you have to use clean filtered water. And what you're seeing right now is that I am just boiling the water. I brought it down to a simmer after adding in the sugar and now I'm adding in the tea. For this recipe you are going to need four packages of black tea is what the recipe calls for but I just went ahead and used green tea because I found green tea works just as good if not in my opinion better. I found with using black tea the kombucha comes out a little bit more sour and personally I don't really mind that but with the way how it's made in my family household it goes uh, for fermentation which we're going to get into that process here in a little bit but you know since it ferments for a few more days than what we usually do I just like to use green tea. Once your tea has been brewed go ahead and set your pan off to the side and let that cool to room temperature. And after many hours, the tea has now come down to room temperature. For your next step, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to make sure that your hands are nice and clean, and you're going to want to squeeze these tea bags and get all the amount of tea you can from it. Your next step, you're going to want a cup of kombucha. And if you guys don't have kombucha already, you could go to your local grocery store and buy a bottle of kombucha, and then just go ahead and add a cup to that. Next, you're going to want to take your tea, and you're going to want to put it into a bowl for your next step. Once the tea has been added to the bowl, next thing what you're going to want to do is that you're going to want to grab your SCOBY. Now, the SCOBYs are a little hard to come by. Um, my mom actually ended up getting a SCOBY from a friend or something or a co-worker. I'm not exactly sure. But if you guys want to learn how to make a SCOBY, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. But it is a three-week process. For your next step, you're going to want to cover up uh, your bowl. And so before we do that, you're going to want to wipe off the edge of the bowl to get masking tape over it. Just two pieces of tape, and then you're going to want to put cloth over it. So the tape prevents the cloth from drooping down inside of it and just making the tea all nasty and whatnot. Then what you're going to want to do, you're going to take this bowl of tea, and then you're going to want to stick it into a cupboard for at least eight to nine days so it could ferment. And the SCOBY likes to be in a dark room temperature place for it to ferment. The average recipe usually calls for a week uh, fermentation, so only seven days. But I went ahead and just did nine days instead because personally, I like my kombucha to be a little bit more on the sour side. And like what I said earlier about um, having the kombucha on the sour side and using black tea, green tea and whatnot. Since the normal fermentation day is seven days, but we go through ours through like eight through eight days. I like using green tea because it keeps it more sour, but like not too awfully sour if you know what I mean. And if you guys are wondering what I'm doing right here, I decided to go for a pumpkin spice kombucha. And I just grabbed a can of pumpkins and I put it into a bowl and now I'm just smashing the pumpkin up. And the amount that we need, we are going to want one cup of pumpkin. By the way, you could pause it here, but here's just a little list of other flavors of kombucha you can do. Go ahead and set that one cup of pumpkin off to the side and grab your bowl of kombucha. Find something that you could keep tea in that you could also keep the SCOBY in. I'm not exactly too sure on this part. My mom usually uh, has something to keep SCOBYs off in the side, so I just went and found that, and I just went ahead and put the SCOBY in there for it to, uh, you know, rest and do its thing until it's gonna be used again. So, for your next step right here, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna transfer this kombucha into a half gallon jar. And if you guys want to, you could just end off the video right here. You guys could have uh, plain green tea kombucha or plain black tea kombucha. It doesn't matter, but me, I'm going the extra mile and I'm going to give this a pumpkin spice flavor to it. So when you fill up the jar, you're gonna to wanna to keep a little bit of room in it for that cup of pumpkin to sit inside of it so the jar doesn't overflow. Now, take some normal pumpkin spice. You're gonna to wanna to get a teaspoon of pumpkin spice and you're gonna to wanna to add it to your jar of kombucha. Next up, what you're gonna to wanna to do, just wipe off the lid one more time so the lid doesn't stick to it. And you're gonna to wanna to set this off to the side and let it ferment for another three days so that the fermentation uh, lets the pumpkin spice flavor really mix in with it. So, 
One more thing what you guys are going to want to do with the kombucha. Um, the kombucha naturally carbonates itself. And because of that, if you just let this ferment for the entire three days after when you get your flavor of choice in here, you want to go ahead and you want to unscrew the top of the lid. Not completely, maybe all the way if you want to, just to kind of let the pressure out. So when the three days is up, when you open it, your jar of kombucha does not explode on you. So every single day, doesn't matter what time throughout the day, just make sure you open up the jar, let some of that carbonation out. So when the three days is up, when you do decide to open it, it doesn't fucking blow up on your ass. For your last and final step, you're going to want to remove all of the pumpkin outside of the kombucha. So for what I did right here, I just got four pint jars to separate all the kombucha in. I got a bowl, I got a spoon, and I got a funnel and something to strain out all that with, and look at that. That just looked beautiful. Go ahead and scoop off all the stuff that's on the top of it, put your funnel inside of a jar, and go ahead and just start putting in all of your kombucha into these jars until all of them are completely full. And that is it guys, your kombucha is completely done. Once when you have all of the kombucha separated into different jars, you are going to want to keep this refrigerated. If you guys do not keep it refrigerated and keep it in warm temperature, the fermentation process will start to happen again. It will grow, it will grow a new scoby on top of your kombucha, and the kombucha will tend to be more sour, almost like a vinegary like substance. Also, the longer it sits for in a refrigerator as well, it'll start to grow some stringy stuff inside of it and don't be alarmed by that. The kombucha has not gone bad. That is just a sign that your kombucha is alive and healthy and it's doing what it's meant to be doing when you drink it.